What's going on, everybody? Good Monday morning. Stock market is up to start the week. We always like that. The futures were great overnight. Um, and we've opened up strong this morning. Um, we're up about 750 bucks today. All of our positions now have equity. Um, we've trimmed down to just these four positions. Still getting think or swim set up. Um, we're fully allocated. These are our biggest positions. Um, Square has been really nice for us. Tesla's lagging a little bit behind. Um, what I want to do is give this another couple of days for the market to really continue to prove itself and establish. Um, and then we'll spread this money back around. Um, just looking at the default, these are all five day, 5,000 ticks for the most part. Some of the bigger products uh, might be 1,000 tick, but they're five day tick charts. Um, I kind of like to look at this for a broad view. Um, We definitely had a gap up and have sold off a little bit on some of the tech stuff and happening everywhere. So there's a decent chunk of selling. I mean, nothing crazy. Looking at our money school portfolio, Dexcom and DocuSign are down. Um, those are two that we've recently trimmed. I want to say DraftKings, just monstrous. Taylor Morrison is another one that we let go. Um, that company is going to continue to, to move higher. Um, and so is Penn Gaming. Looks like it's come back. Those have ended up being not great sales. Uh, I'm never really too worried about that because I don't go to cash. I'm gonna to continue to move the money um, into something else, and what I've moved it into has performed as well. Uh, I've actually managed this portfolio quite a bit more than I wanted to, but we put the positions on with three weeks of negative news in a row, and just kind of battled and had to consolidate, and now, um, We're at 42,500, we started at 41,7. So the whole portfolio has some equity. We've gotten the positions on, we've rotated a little bit. You can see in NVIDIA, we bought it all. We've been buying it down here. We've got a little move to the upside. I'm not particularly interested in selling anything. Just keeping my eye on what's happening with the market. Lulu continues to have a lot of pressure to the upside. Most overbought, Zillow DraftKings target. Most oversold continues to be Google. I think these two top companies, Alphabet and Facebook, have a lot of government pressure coming. Um, with this election, there's just going to be a lot of negativity. Let's hop in and look at the uh, NASDAQ 100. Also having a nice day. So this tells me right away, this is a lot of uh, reopening trade without even looking at news. I can tell you that there's been either good travel numbers or good shopping numbers or, or good numbers with COVID just based on these top numbers at the top. And I like to do this, just kind of hop through the market and see what's moving and what is uh, winning and losing on a daily basis. Nothing too sexy here. Energy, solar, semi, 
End phase is just a beast. Here's max monthly goes back to 2012. I mean, in three years time, going from 65 cents adjusted to $80. I mean, it's crazy. Year to date. Clearly getting to all time highs. Bouncing off of that low. This might be one that we need to get a part of because it's just been a great story. We'll keep an eye on end phase. The other one, that thing's gonna to continue to have a nice couple quarter run here is AMD. Uh, as the NVIDIA chips come out there to get the full power of the 3070, 3080, 3090, you're gonna need your computer to have PCIe 4, which almost none of them have PCIe 4 except for AMD and their AM4 uh, socket. A lot of those boards, are forward compatible, far more for, forward compatible than the Intel-based boards. Um, even the current i9s, the 10th generation i9s are on PCIe 3, which is not the end of the world. I mean, NVIDIA still debuted their 3080s on uh, Core i9 10th gen. The 11th gens are gonna come out, they're gonna be more expensive. And I think on a relative basis, you're going to see a lot of enthusiasts and gamers and uh, just home, home builds switch towards the Ryzen 9s, the, the Ryzen 7s and the Ryzen 9s. And then the enthusiasts, the thread rippers are, you know, quite a bit better in my opinion, um, especially when you consider value. So I think AMD is gonna to continue to take share from Intel and on the Radeon side, I don't think it's as important because they're less invested in that now. They've kind of conceded ground to NVIDIA. So I think the, uh, the CPU side is gonna be dominated by AMD and the GPU side and the ARM side is gonna be dominated by NVIDIA. Taiwan Semi is gonna make most of the chips for both. So this whole chip space is interesting. Um, Taiwan Semi is one um, trades in lockstep with Apple, but it's right on its 50, and I think it's going to bounce. They're ma they make all the chips. They manufacture the chips for the new iPhone, the new iPad, um, Qualcomm Snapdragon, um, a lot of the tech that's in a lot of the hardware boards and uh, all the new gaming stuff on tech. So obviously I like the, the semis, NVIDIA, AMD, Taiwan Semi. End phase. Intel, I don't think is dead. I do think that there's value in this chart. I mean, this is a nasty chart. Um, but eventually they're going to roll out their 11th gen, which they've already announced. And they're going to be great. They just are going to be expensive. So they could stand to really benefit if. Uh, the trade war and what's happening with a lot of the TikTok stuff, if that spills over into the chip space, um, Intel being an American manufacturer is going to have an advantage over AMD, which is a, a Korean manufacturer. Um, and NVIDIA is an American manufacturer as well, but they have heavy roots in, in China. I mean, there's no way around getting through mainland China if you're engineering computer hardware. So um, I think all in all, all these companies are just going to continue to win and, you know, be good companies they're just kind of taking share from each other and i think amd has turned the corner and they're starting to take more from intel man there's a lot going on today energy getting a bounce i mean interesting some of this stuff seems like really we're getting bounces and Harley and 
a lot of these are lower level. Dexcom, worse than the 500. Norwegian Cruise Lines being down is really interesting with a lot of the travel news being good. Um, man, that's interesting. I'm also surprised that Netflix hasn't had a little bit more, um, but a little sell off here in NVIDIA, that's mostly on a gap up. I'm just going through, this is the whole semi industry. You can see by size. NVIDIA, 317 billion bucks. But this is an interesting space. They're gonna power a lot of um, what we're gonna use in the future. These particular sublists are great for um, identifying just huge outliers in performance. It can look kind of sloppy with how I have it, but it's a 512 days. It's a year and a quarter, pretty much. So the NANs are ones that haven't been around that long. And then the rest of these are sort of in order of their performance over that same period. So you can, all of the outliers start to pop out. I mean, this is a company, it's up 300%. It's down 33% in the last two weeks, getting really oversold. I mean, I don't know anything about this company, but jumps off as a, a small company. I mean, SEP, you know, not even a penny stock. People out here just crazy gambling on ideas that are related. All these kind of sell and trade together. And you can see that there's huge numbers where people are just creating a ton of wealth and stuff that's three cents a share. Um, as quickly as that money comes, it can go. So it's all about figuring out you know, a lot of these in here, when you're looking at market cap, a lot of these, this is the wheelhouse, in my opinion. Under 10 billion, over a billion. All of these in here. I mean, these are real interesting. I don't mean, this has been getting a, a lot of a bid. So if you're interested in this space, this is a good way to kind of get a look at what's in the space and what's been moving. And then it can also be an end phase. Bang. That's actually how I found end phase to begin is just kind of looking through lists like this um, and seeing, you know, what is really jumping out. Um, And these are just our core stocks that we watch on a regular basis. We're not doing anything to the portfolio right now. We're just kind of looking at the market, seeing how everything's going. Um, started this uh, up a few more hundred dollars. So getting a little bit of a sell off here. We're just going to hold tight. We've already condensed the portfolio. What we want to see is what I'm looking for is I want to have a nice move in all of these where we have equity from open and we can start reducing the positions by, you know, a couple thousand dollars, keeping equity in and then moving that money. And then we're going to spread back out to eight to 12 positions. But right now, this is considered a defensive posture in my opinion. Even though it's all high-tech growth, we're kind of hiding in these core four names. I would like to have 12 positions, 20 positions, 
Um, if the market, if we would have put everything on and everything would have rallied immediately, we would be trimming and growing and kind of spreading out. Um, I'm just less confident in the market generally. So we've kind of boiled things down and that's what we're doing right now. So every single position we have, we have a positive basis in Tesla has rallied back. This was a nice one today to get us back to even, and we're just going to let this cook. Um, hope you're having a good start. To your Monday, 9 a.m. on the West Coast. See, things seem less crazy and more crazy every day. Uh, stock market's rallying, though. I think long-term, a lot of the noise we're getting is going to be an afterthought once we start a year, two, three down the road once the, the economy, I think, is going to look quite a bit different than it does right now. And... That's why we're heavy in tech. So I think as much as, you know, making trades is important, just looking at the market is also important. So we're going to continue to do check-ins like this. And now that we're on the new platform, we have quite a bit more that we can look at. So uh, again, hope you have a good rest of your Monday and a good week and I'll check in soon.